Hello and welcome to the art of selling online courses. The goal of this is to share winning strategies and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. And today's guest is Jane Sagalovich. Now, since 2018, Jane has helped hundreds of experts create and sell their online courses with clarity, confidence and ease. She's the founder of Scale Your Genius. She's on a mission to try and inspire and guide coaches and experts and consultants to reclaim their time and build more wealth and create more impact and show that leveraging your time and scaling your business doesn't have to mean that you get poor quality results or poor quality service. She wants to rid the world of crappy online courses. Now, I know that nobody listening to this has crappy online courses, but maybe if you're thinking of making your course and you want to make a great one, this is going to be for you. So before we start learning from Jane, I want to mention our sponsor. And today's sponsor is my company, Data Driven Marketing. And what we do is we help online course creators to increase their online course revenue 20 to 100% through strategic funnel optimization. And we help you convert more visitors into leads, more leads into sales, and more sales into higher revenue sales. We do that through email marketing, webinars, um, lead magnet optimization, that kind of thing. So if you want to know how much more money you could be making, go to datadrivenmarketing.co slash calculator, put in your numbers, and we'll figure out for you how much more you could be making. Jane, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, John. I am really excited to be here. Nice. So let's get into it. You've got a different way of making courses to what other people do, a kind of a hybrid model. Can you talk everybody through how that works? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I developed this model before 2018 with my last business. So 2018 and on, I've had Scale Your Genius, where this is the specific model I focused on. But uh, kind of this model came out of me trying to learn some things and taking some kind of what we think of as online courses, the regular online courses that are digital modules. Maybe there's a Facebook community or something. And I would get to a point where I would get stuck and then have no way to move forward. And because I didn't spend that much money on the course, I kind of just put it away and moved on. And so when I entered the business of making my own, one thing, like one of my driving values is impact. And so I really wanted to make sure that I am creating something that really makes a difference for the people taking it. And they don't have the experience that I did of you hit a roadblock and that's the end of the experience. So the hybrid online course model was born out of that. And it is based, it's, it's so simple. The simple principle underlying it is you just separate your teaching component, which is what becomes your digital course. The digital modules that your clients go down is the step-by-step -step process that you teach. However, you add on either one-on-one -on -one or group support from you, the creator, to enable your clients to, one, have somebody to ask questions when they get stuck. And more importantly, you as the, you know, as the holder of the wisdom of the brilliance that the course was based on, this allows you to go so, so, so much deeper with your clients than you ever could if it is digital modules only. So I know passive income scalability is one of the goals that people have when they create online courses. So when I originally present, they're like, yeah, Jay, no, 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 thanks. This sounds like coaching still. And the really big difference is when the digital modules are created really well and really thoughtfully, the one-on-one -on -one or group time is minimized. So in my experience, it's about one-fifth to one-quarter of the time you would spend per client. You can charge the same price as you would in a full one-on-one -on -one service because the outcomes are actually just as good, if not better. And so you do get to scale some, not infinitely in this first phase, which is what, so the hybrid online course is what I say it should be the first phase for a lot of creators. From that place, you can really scale more fully, whether releasing those digital modules as that fully autonomous online course, you know, for creating like a licensing model where you can clone yourself through other people who could provide that one-on-one -on -one or group support. So after the first stage of the hybrid online course model, which is digital modules plus one-on-one -on -one or group support, the next level could be much more automated and scalable too. So I kind of look at it as like a multi-phase path to your uh, online business empire. Nice. And you mentioned it can be the same price as doing it one-to-one -one with people. It's obviously, it's getting the same result, right? So you're taking all the bits. Or you better, or better before. usually. That's the cool thing, yeah. Do you find there's any pushback from people that you're selling to or that your clients are selling to in terms of... Yeah, so we never sell a course. That is one of right. the things that I, I don't sell. Like people ask, do I buy a course? I'm like, or can they buy a course? Yeah, kind of, not really. So my clients will call them journeys 
or intensives, you know, you're a marketing guy. So it is finding the word that resonates with people that enables them to understand the value of this process. Yeah. I think the word course has gotten a bad rep because mm-hmm. of the crappy online courses out there. And so I'm careful, you know, I'll use the word course somewhere in my marketing materials, but it's not the first thing you see. Yeah. So the course is almost like a feature of the entire thing. That's a great way um, of putting it. Yeah. Rather than the main focus. And what's your model with the coaching? Cause you mentioned doing one-to-one or group. And I assume, is that like an option that you're offering people or is it like you choose which one you're going to do in advance? Yeah. Yeah. So I personally offer unlimited one-on-one support until my clients get their first two clients. So that is my personal model. And we can dive a little deeper into like, it's not a model I recommend as a blanket thing. Like people are like unlimited unlimited support. Now you're really crazy, Jane. Uh, (laughs) Right. Like we're talking scaling here. You're going the opposite direction. So there's a method to this madness. And I actually spend way, way, way less one-on-one time since I have implemented that model versus going from 30 minutes per module. So We can dive into that separately, but when I walk my clients through the course creation process, one of the first things they decide is what kind of outcomes they want their clients to have as a result of taking their program or course. And that determines how much support comes in. A lot of my uh, clients, I, I see a lot of people lean towards group first, I think partly because there's a lot of stuff on the internet that says you group is kind of the next step. I don't think it's right for everybody. I think there are more people out there doing group programs than there should be. And not every topic is good for group and not every coach or trainer is good at group facilitation. It's a very different skill than, you know, coaching or training or creating a course. And so maybe group, maybe one-on-one, but just a way for your clients to go deeper into the topic is really, really all it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if I get you right, what you're saying is you figure out the transformation, the result that you want people to get, and then you go, well, how could I get them that? And then what are the bits that could be scalable? Okay. I always teach these things. Every time I do it, I teach this thing. One, I just record that in advance, take that out separately. Maybe a part of it is done well as a group. Maybe parts of it need to be done one-to-one, or maybe the whole thing could be done as a group or whatever. And you kind of like, make that bespoke around how you're going to get the client, the results as the starting point. Exactly. You figure out their destination, you figure out where they're starting from. So then, you know, in your marketing in your marketing copy and messaging, you can speak to the person who's specifically at that point in their journey. Then you create the series of steps, which are your modules, right? And the modules guide them towards action. So I always say, when you create online core, it's not, inf- information is free, right? We can go on YouTube, we can go on Google and we can find any information we want the course, the digital module journey has to take them down a step-by-step process of action. So you are enabling them to take action of every step of the process. At the end of these steps, whatever transformation or result has been achieved. And it is like the things you say, it's like, what am I sick of saying over and over again? Right? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. probably if you ask an aspiring course creator, they probably can come up with like, yeah, every single client here are the things I say. What are the pieces you teach? What are the pieces you train? There was an interesting statistic and I'm going to mess up the exact numbers, but something like e-learning creates a 45% information retention, whereas in-person learning creates an 8%. So 8% versus 45% data retention difference. So people mistakenly think that if they're teaching something, you know, if if you're my client and I'm teaching you something like this, that it's better than in a digital format. And that's actually the reverse. Yeah. It's interesting. I worked with a coach for a while who had done a course as part of somebody else's coaching program. So it's kind of all a bit meta. And he had the modules in the course where he'd thought it through, he'd created the slides, he'd got himself in the right state, he'd presented it really well. And I would go back and rewatch those, even though I was doing one-to-one coaching with him as well, because I was like, well, I can actually just do that at my own pace and my own time. I can watch it a bunch of times, think about it, make questions, and then go talk to you about it. And that was like, and he might not have thought to bring that topic up, whereas I knew that that was available. So having that kind of combination was like super nailed it that is exactly it when we learn 
we want to do it at our own pace. If you want to take notes, you want to pause. And if this thing is happening live, you you can't pause, you yeah. know, and that's, yeah. I, I see, especially with like group programs. That's one of the big mistakes I see people. So you have a live group call and they're training one. That's a huge waste of their time. Cause why are they doing this live? They're going to do this to the next group again. Why not pre-record it? Mm. Now these people, they can't pause. They're going to end up watching the recording again. Now you're using up double of their time. Mm. Time is their most precious commodity. Like it's just not good for anybody, which is why I love of the idea of separating everything you train or teach into digital modules. Mm. Yeah. And I said that the, the outcomes are even better. This is exactly why, or well, this is one of the big reasons why. Nice. And what for you then is the deciding factor between you said you do a whole bunch that's one-to-one -one and some that's group then later after they've got the first I do not course. host group. No, I do not okay. host group programs. Over the four years I did two. Again, this is when I said like the topic has to be right. I, I think that when people host groups, there has to be value to the client and not just instead of one person per hour, I can help 10 per hour. Yeah. That's very yeah, creator centric. Mm. If there's no value to the client, I don't believe we should be creating group programs. And there was no value to my client. The group call, like they weren't having similar enough questions and issues, right? Because the group values when they get to benefit from each other's questions from the conversation in the group. And that was not happening. Yeah, we're just starting. We've done one-to-one -one for a long time. We're recording our course at the moment and we're starting a program really soon. And I had somebody message me about this and he said, I don't want to go onto group calls. And I was like, interesting. Is there a way that we can still help him and actually have the, you know, have the program work for him? So with your one-to-one -one support that you do for people, is that one-to-one -one calls? Is it, you said it's not a regular ones. It's like they can book them in when they need them or how does that part of it work? It's unlimited one-on-one -on -one support. So they have options of 30 minute Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. And then I review their collateral, their course and marketing collateral. And also they could just like, we have a communication portal so they can just shoot over quick questions. And, you know, I set very specific boundaries and guidelines. They cannot ask me questions of things that were obviously in the modules, right? Because right. then that's wasting my time, which is the whole point of not. So if they can't ask me things, they can easily Google. So yeah. when they, you know, when we come together, it really is brainstorming. It's going, you know, it's like, can you help me translate this into, you know, one idea into how to market it? It's really just diving deeper and customizing the content is really what happens on our one-on-one -on -one calls. But no. yeah, there's no reteaching. It's not teaching, right? It, then it goes into right. either coaching or brainstorming or diving deeper. Awesome. Okay. That's really smart. And so what happens to someone, they get two clients and that unlimited stops. Is there still more one-to-one? -one? It's just not unlimited anymore. Nope. So there's no more one-to-one. -one. They do have a lifetime access to the course. And so the idea is because I teach them a repeatable marketing strategy, a marketing plan. So it's kind of like once they have two, we, we've proven the model a little bit, not a hundred percent, but we've proven it enough to say, we have a model that works. People are buying, you know, this is working. I actually, I was on an enrollment call yesterday and, and the woman had the same question. She's like, what if I get two clients? And then that's the end of it. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll support, like, if, if that's the case, I will support you further. But in my experience, once they get two especially if they're using the strategy I taught, they will get more. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And how long have you done it that way for with those one-to-one -one calls? So the first, about a year, the first three years, I did the more typical of like 30 minutes per module, 30 minutes right. of calls per module. Here's what, what was interesting was happening is they either, my modules are really, really good. That's one of the things I pride myself on is creating really amazing ex digital experiences. And so people wouldn't need help. So they would get on this call because, you know, they quote unquote paid for it and it would be such a waste of both of our time. And that didn't feel good for either one of us. Right. Mm. They're like, wait, I thought I was supposed to get help and this isn't helping. And I'm like, well, you don't need help with anything. So why are we even doing this? And so that was what was happening. And then every once in a while, I'd have a client who would need more support, but would feel guilty asking for it. So they weren't getting what they needed and they weren't getting the results they needed. So overall, I spent about half of the time I did before when I opened it up to unlimited. Interesting. So people book less calls when they're unlimited. Mm -hmm. That's Isn't that cool? fascinating. Yeah. yeah. But it gives them, the thing it does do, it gives them a confidence through the entire process, knowing that I am here. That's the big benefit. It's interesting. I've got uh, some friends who run unlimited services, like unlimited graphic design, for example, or unlimited bookkeeping or whatever. And 
it's stuff where it comes in bursts you know you need a bunch of support and then you don't and it's like this gives someone the kind of the it's almost like insurance it's like oh i've got enough there i can get however much i need exactly. and it turns out you don't need as much as you thought you might do but you kind of got that comfort level from it that's exactly it yeah i love how you ex yeah like the insurance analogies is really really good that's exactly what it is i'm here if you need you don't need to need me but i'm here if you do yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. want to pay you don't want to make insurance claims we had a dog for a long time and he got really ill and we made plenty of money back off that insurance company you know and i was like it's not really what you want is it i would much rather <laughs> i didn't get my money back from the insurance company mm -hmm, absolutely yeah so you mentioned that sometimes your clients though do do group sessions so what's the time when someone should do group yep so whenever them seeing other people go through a similar experience is valuable so a lot of on the mind on the I'll call like mindset stuff, personal development, performance. I find that being really valuable. Um, I'm trying to think of my clients who are doing group. One of my clients, so her course is relationship after baby. So it's specifically for couples who are about to have a baby and everyone tells you what to do with a baby. No one tells you what to do with your partner. So that's a group program for couples. And it's really great for them to see other couples going through the exact same experience and how they're handling that. So it's like the, um, what's the phrase I'm trying to think of is like, the comfort of like seeing other people go through the same experience is comforting. Yeah. Those kind of are really good. I have a client doing a weight loss thing. That's a group program. Same. They're kind of like encouraging and inspiring each other with, um, what other ones are really good group relationship, like relationship counseling, really uh, well, not counseling, but relationship programs are really good too. Again, it's, it's where people can hear from each other, learn from each other, you know, maybe even build like build those relationships, build those peer groups with each other. You know, they're kind of like a mastermind format where they need, you know, do they feel like an island otherwise? Do they need a supportive group to be able to go through this process better? Interesting. Do you ever, with that then, do you organize buddy groups or masterminds for people who are going through to kind of help them to get that group stuff? I have not. And, and I just, I don't. I just don't think it's valuable for my topic. My program's 90 days. It's like efficient, get in, do this thing, build your online course empire. They, for this topic, I don't feel like it's helpful. How about any of your clients when you let them do that? Building mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them have like, yeah, have a lot of, um, just kind of mastermind community groups. Absolutely. Membership communities. Um, you know, so I'll say like my distinction, I know everyone has their own definitions, but the difference between a course in a community or a mastermind or a membership community is a course has a beginning and an end and mm -hmm. the community or the mastermind is kind of ongoing. And that is what's better for those peer relationships too, is this is your group. This is who you grow with. You know, like I'm part of two communities that are kind of ongoing where I make great connections. I get, make amazing business partners. Some of those people become friends. And so there's two groups that I'm just a part of, but their ongoing experiences where you do get to nurture those relationships over time. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, it's interesting. I just think it's something I've been thinking quite a lot about. So my wife went through a, a course um, called Human Potential Institute and the guy who does Bulletproof Coffee, Dave something. I can't mm, Dave Asprey. Yeah. So he was the one who kind of started this whole program and they helped so it's a course they had weekly coaching they had access to materials that you could see in advance they had practice sessions and they encouraged you to set up a mastermind with other people who are they called it a buddy group with other people who were going through the course mm -hmm. so every week you would have a call with these other two people and you would do practice runs so this was about becoming a coach and so you would each coach each other for 20 30 minutes each week and it was like apply all the stuff that you'd learned during the previous week and kind of start to test it out and she found that enormously valuable. So we were looking at, in our coaching program, are we going to help people to set those up? Mm, mm -hmm. Because I've some people will benefit. Not everyone has to do it, but if yeah. you do want it, then we can help facilitate it. Yeah. I have seen that. Like accountability buddies is one way of saying it. Um, yeah. yeah kind of creating in those, and that's for big groups, right? So if you're in a big group program, I'm assuming Dave Asprey's is probably pretty huge. Mm -hmm. How do you create a more personal experience within something that's otherwise really large? Yeah. 
I personally hate to be a part of those because I, I just feel like it's like, like I'm here to learn from the expert. It's like a little bit of like a blind leading the blind, you know, right, right, right. <laughs> like you don't know. It's fine for like, if you're practicing sales pitches or if you're practicing, yeah, like there, there's, there's value in kind of practicing on each other, but I'm more of a learn from the expert type. Mm -hmm. Efficiency is one of my really big values. So I'm like, none of this stuff. Just give me, get, get, give me what I need to know. Cool. And what have you heard, like the, the kind of results that this gets for people or what's some of the kind of feedback for anyone who's listened to this and thinking, maybe I should try out that kind of model. What's the feedback you get from your clients? They love, love, love delivering it. One, they're making a ton of money. They're making about all my client, all is wrong. About 80% of my clients make four times what they were making before or more with this model. So they're making a lot more money, but they are just loving, loving, loving the process. Their testimonials are amazing coming in. So they're just super thrilled being able to, to do this. Like they really mm -hmm. are living out that mission. They're really living out their mission and being compensated for it. So they really, they kind of get the combination of the two. I know sometimes if you can go too far in the passive income, you're getting the, the wealth and, and, and the money, but for some people, a little bit of service is missing and especially people who are coming from a coaching training perspective where they are so used to dealing with people, removing that completely can feel jarring and not great. So mm -hmm. do we have a minute? I can go through like what kind of the next automated process could look like. Yeah, cool. Okay. Really quickly. Yeah. So this is the first step, right? It's the hybrid. It's the one with support. What happens when you deliver this program in, in beta testing? I'm sure that's a term your audience is very familiar with. It's when you kind of test your product before you roll it out to the market for, for, for real. When you are providing one-on-one -on -one group support, you don't have to do a beta because you, as you're talking to people and you are aware of gaps in your material, because they'll be asking, like, you'll have all your clients asking the same questions. So you're like, okay, obviously my digital modules did not cover that. So you are able through this hybrid process, create really, really, really amazing digital modules that you at some point can offer as a separate tier to be fully automated, fully passive income and then decide how much, if any, to continue to do as the hybrid model. Um, but what happens at that point is like your hybrid basically acts like a full price beta for your digital modules. And yeah. so when you release your digital modules, you know, they're amazing. Nice. And in terms of the pricing, you said that you can actually generally charge as much money for selling a coaching program like this or journey or whatever the <laughs> phrase is as doing something one for one for people. Is that right? Absolutely. Or more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause it's my pricing methodology is based on value. So all the courses my clients create are $2,500 and up 25,000 is, is the highest my, like my clients have gone. I know these programs can sell for much more than that. Um, but 2,500 is the low. And again, depending if somebody's selling, a six month coaching program for $20,000. There's absolutely no reason to have a six month hybrid journey for at least that much. Great. Nice. If people want to go and learn more about if they're like, okay, I want to learn a bit more about this model and, and how this all works, where can they go? Yep. So if they just want to like snoop around all my stuff, scaledgenius.com is my website. I have a lot of awesome live video recordings on there, blog posts, articles. It'll link you to my social media and all that. So scaledgenius.com. I have an amazing free gift for your community also. It is the 30K Blueprint Bootcamp. It is a three-day evergreen bootcamp, just 30-minute video per day plus a worksheet on exactly how to create your blueprint for your own hybrid online course, how to build, sell, and deliver it. So that is go.scaledgenius.com forward slash data underscore driven. And that was a mouthful and it's going to be in the show notes, I think. <laughs> the notes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, if you found this interview useful, please give us a review wherever you listened and then come join the Advanced Online Course Creators Group on Facebook and you get early access to future interviews and support with growing your online course sales. Thanks so much, Jane. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, John.